welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is once again Jess versus Bug, although I'm leaving this color set. I'm just telling you, I like this color set. Bottom left hand corner, Jess starting as the what looks like a crazy, this is like 90s colors is what it feels like. Bottom left hand corner, Jess starting as Zerg. Upper right hand corner, we got Bug starting as the Midnight Blue Protoss. This is on Retro, which has that mineral pile in the middle for some reason. I wonder if this is ever going to be a thing. I've dev I have seen that used intentionally in a TVP, uh, but otherwise not so much. Cross positions, um, just thus far, so if you missed last game, go back and watch it. Just thus far has really solid build orders, very good at going into the economic defensive game, but it seems like the late game hot keying and being able to move the army around and convert that economy into army is, has been faltering quite a bit. And the multitasking in the late game may be trying to manage all the bases and stay on top of the multitasking. Also struggling. But honestly, if Jess can figure that out, monster play down the line, because wow. Uh, massive advantages. Like really, honestly, massive advantages. And Bug, between a drop, I, I gotta say, Bug did a really good job of carving the army up though, uh, in between that and the drop and, and multitasking in between. So it looks like it is going to be another forge opener on bug side cross map positions, but really just did everything right up until what was it around the 13 minute mark and then just things fell apart. I'm hoping Jess can make a recovery and shift things around. It looks like it is going to be a, another, this time a 12 hatchery uh, and a drone scout the way out. Looks like the probe checking top left hand corner first, Jess making the way towards the right Initially, this might be actually a cross map scout for Jess, which would be again early benefit. This time, Bug opting to maybe go Nexus first, which will be wise. This is kind of cute. So, Bug checked the 12 o'clock location to see if the Overlord was caught, checking across the nine to see it again. But I believe this is going to be a continuation into the bottom left from there. And in the meantime, Jess did go for a cross map scout, so going to get the early detection here. And see that, in fact, was an Nexus first. Getting some disruption on the cannon. Cannon drop, but that probe might die if it stays in fistfights. Get out of there. Go, drone. You can you can get it. Never mind. It looks like that probe's going to live. In the meantime, Bug getting the information gleaned. Photon cannon taking some damage. That drone. Is the drone going to pull out? Because you, I don't think a drone just attacking the photon cannon does enough damage. Like, you can shred the shield, but you don't get a lot else. Another probe coming off the line <laughs> to hit some, hit some whatnot. But yeah, so we don't even have, yeah, no base damage. We can soften the cannon up, scare the Protoss, though. Nice disruption at the 9 o'clock this time from Bug. I'm wondering if Bug checked the replay and was like, whoop, I dodged. I, I definitely dodged something right there. So it looks like camping out at the 9 o'clock location to disrupt additional base, taking just going to cycle around. This is interesting. Going to go for a... Maybe going to try to go four hatcheries before gas once again, because dropping a fourth hatchery outside the natural. So this is definitely going to be a five hatch hydralisk. And this is... With the forge first, let's see if this gets punished or not. Again, before gas, we do have the spawning pool up. So very rapid four hatcheries before gas. Kind of a... And this might actually just be straight up five hatcheries with the six o'clock base grab. Jess already positioning a drone here at the six o'clock to play even greedier. And we'll see if Bug uh, scouts out and finds us here at the six o'clock, but seeing the four hatcheries up, sometimes the reaction should be just, yeah, get an additional gateway and start flooding units because you can maybe over, especially if Jess doesn't produce a lot of Zerglings in between, run this over pretty rapidly. Anyway, spawning pool getting attacked a bit. Some drones freaking out. Are they going to get attacked over the line? I'm trying to keep an eye on their health. It looks like that one took some damage over the edge. Uh, we do have initial Zerglings being built to deal with that frustration. It looks like the drone that was at the 6 o'clock backing off, though. <clears throat> and the first zealot is away towards the 9 o'clock location. Uh, let's see if we can get anything accomplished there. First two Zerglings produced. No addition. So the Overlord not in position to see the additional zealots out and so that can be a detriment as well because you can't see when the zealots are coming so the zealot there might be able to soften up that hatchery and if bug does opt to go for so dropping instead of a dune actually yeah so gonna i think this is going to be a rapid three gate 
maybe four gate zealot. Um, I will be. I think three gate zealot is the play here. Upon seeing what's been seeing what's been saw, it feels like an odd statement. But plus one weapons upgrading. Uh, we already have one gateway down. An additional pylon to make sure an additional is up. We do have zealot leg being upgraded. <clears throat> this zealot engaging several zerglings along that back edge. Is it going to get four again? No, nope, just gets to three. And we have yet another hatchery. So five hatch now down for just. I am waiting to see. And we do we do have a morph the layer before the hydral is done. But no movement towards Stargate. So this is now three gateways down. Uh, I'm expecting a fourth, honestly, since we got that probe just hanging out here. It is the... It is that lone drone that's uh, supposed to get the flashlight fluid and drop all the shiny buildings. Instead of joining, doing the standard probe work, it's the reject probe that's got to sit back. Oh, never mind. I take it back. It looks like the probe going to go rejoin things. And there is going to be a Stargate drop after the gateways, but we are seeing a lot of zealots being constructed. So plus one, plus one leg speed before the Corsair. We do have a single sunken colony here at the nine o'clock, an additional sunken colony being built here at the natural expansion. Hydralis Den is up, and the Zealot being, some Zealots being queued up here at the main, and a Temple Archives dropping as well for Bug, a defensive Photon Cannon, somewhat unnecessary uh, at this stage, but uh, maybe wise because of the lack of the Corsair scouting. Zealots starting to fan out as the Zerglings are making the way to the Natural, so this might be a lucky break for Jess, because that second Photon Cannon not warped in. Fortunately, if Jess recognizes the situation, looks like it is not recognized, actually. Oh, that's unfortunate, because it might have been able to dive on that cannon at the natural. So just checking, making sure a third, and these Zealots, in the meantime, are sprinting their way across. Second Sunken Colony is not yet up, so they might be able to jump on top, especially with that plus one weapons. Rapidly jump on top of that, uh, this Sunken Colony, wipe it out. Never mind, they're just going to march all the way into the main because not much of a block there. And this could create a, an immense amount of chaos. We have two additional zealots making their way up to the nine o'clock. Not everything is covered by that sunken colony there. Hydral's dying as they're spawning. Drones trying to do what they can. Zerglings getting some good surround and getting some good damage. Uh, unfortunately, the Zerglings coming in piecemeal, which is not a fair fight for the Zerglings. The gas is gone. The drones trying to set up for a drill. Not quite able to do so. The zealots stepping back out, which means they're engaging so nice drill right there, but nothing was attacking them at the same time. So it looks like they're just going to retreat back to the natural. Looks like the Zealots were cleaned up here at the 9 o'clock location, but this is still an empty base now. And we have continued macro additional gateways being dropped from Bug out in between. So Bug doing pretty good damage now and cutting into Jess's economic play. Zealots look like they're going to get cleaned up, but that was a lot of Zerglings that had to be built. A lot of them have died. Let's look at the kills. So we got nine and seven kills right here, and that's just the Zealots that are remaining in the base. This is before they're going to sweep in into a defensive slot, so the Zergling's just going to sit there and watch them, and uh, the drone's going to start filtering back out. I don't know that this is enough Zerglings, honestly. So they're trying to drill on top of those Zealots <laughs> while they're sitting there. Kind of a cute... The drone's wanting revenge, it looks like. And Bug... Not missing a beat. Looks like uh, going to sneak out and try to expand bottom right. That Overlord is certainly going to die mid-map position. Massive worker advantage. We have all sorts of gateways dropped in the meantime for Bug. No additional Corsairs. Two defensive cannons that are mostly unnecessary. The Zealots got the scouting. A six hatchery being plopped down in the main. Uh, Jess has a l is behind on supply. Not like catastrophically so, actually but is a little bit light on well actually not in that bad a drone position for this place but really needs to find this base going up the bottom right and stop it early because get if whenever is uh, whenever zerg whenever protoss can get three bases up it's a much more difficult game for zerg especially when they can just march out on the map the zealots engaging testing that there's lurkers there there are in fact lurkers i'm wondering if we're going to see a shuttle make its way up we'll see uh two cannons Defending some Dark Templar, recognizing there's no overlords out on the front. So Jess, in a solid defensive slot, that might be what Jess wants to do to just try to play things straight again, just try to play the economic game from this stage, but down a significant amount of supply now. A good amount of hatcheries behind this. Queen's Nest to maybe get to Hive off three bases. We have the Hydralist Den, 
Only a single evolution chamber in between going for, it looks like this is going to be a transition to, I don't know, Ultralisk uh, Zergling. And we have the Carapace upgrade uh, in between. Plus one Carapace already finished, by the way. So it looks like it's not going to be... So usually you'll see that plus one weapons on the Hydralisks in between. Dark Templar sneaking in there. The Zealots dancing in between. It looks like it might be the return of Dave from the previous game. So Dark Templar are doing some good spec op stuff to keep that alive. Yeah, no plus one weapons on the Hydralisks. Wanted to confirm that. Nexus building bottom right. And this attack force really limiting Jess's ability to kind of sneak out and get it, get additional information. Looks like we have a drone making its way top left potentially as well. Dark Archon, just in case there was a Mutalisk switch. And this drone now, <laughs> the drone was thinking, I'll take a base bottom right, but now finding, oops, that base is in fact already taken. And just gonna try to expand top left to go up to four bases. Unfortunately, it looks like Bug is also grabbing that, that three o'clock base. <clears throat> completely out in the open and uncontested. Hive tech about halfway finished, but uh, off three bases versus four base Protoss, that especially with the, looks like a lot of gateways down from Bug. Bug should, as long as Bug stays on top of the macro, should be in good position. We're just now seeing the observatory out on the field. Uh, and just honestly, so we, we got like 40 supply of army right here and some sneaky creep colonies, like, trying to creep the map forward a little bit, interestingly enough. Dark Templar out to uh, stop that 6 o'clock base, potentially grabbing. Bug moving the army out to the 3 o'clock. One problem for Bug is this is a lot of territory to defend, and once Zerg starts swarming, that can be trouble. Just in the macro game, has managed to catch up within a, a decent supply range. With Hive Tech, with uh, some, some Defiler support, particularly Plague, can equalize things a bit. We do have Adrenal Upgrade along the way. And the Zergling's actually going to be a little bit more formidable with that earlier plus one weapons than usual. But you have plus two weapons, plus one armor out for Bug. So Bug is going to have that overall upgrade advantage for the moment. But we do have the plus two Carapus just about to finish. And it looks like a Spire dropping in the midst of this. So Corsair's going to move out. Bug going to move that Skeleton Force out of position. Maybe the cell checks top left and finds the hatchery before it completes which would be disastrous for Jess and we'll see if Jess overcommits troops that direction might be a little bit nervous Jess is playing very nervous here we got some lurkers morphing on the front very very defensive still Zell has found top left has found it and sees the creep spread does Zell react maybe it just wants it's a nice kind of foot massage do thing going on two lurkers making their way to the north that should be sufficient to take care of that but maybe not the follow-up attack force of Dragoons, especially without a Defiler to support. We have a Nidus Canal being built to maybe provide some support. The Lurkers n finding the Zelt, but not yet burrowing. A bunch of Zerglings preemptively making their way. And Bug kind of debating where to attack here. It looks like the Zerglings going to find some troops in between here. The Dark Archon just hanging out, waiting. Looks like a lot of these troops did make it top left. Somehow the Zealots, never mind, the probe survives. That's going to get spotted. But Bug with a pretty sizable attack force outside of this. And a man on the inside. Or a robot, a robot on the inside. I think that was the robot that was uh, bribing the overlords from the previous match. So Bug setting up 20 supply lead. Looks like some Zerglings are going to careen in here at the 6 o'clock. Going to clean up that Dark Templar to maybe open up another base. But in the meantime, the 3 o'clock... Wow, that's a lot of cannons dropping there. Humming. We have... The... Very difficult... So no Observer here, but this is... Wow, that's a lot of Zergling. And the Overlords. Everything getting hit by that size Storm. Lurkers on the high ground going to damage the troops from the low ground. So this is kind of a... I'm not sure what to say about this engagement in both directions. The Observer slowly making its way forward. Keep in mind that uh, Maelstrom does not work on burrowed units. Which is why that, in fact, missed. Moving up and size storming again. It does work when the Lurkers are... Well, never mind. You're not going to get to see it right that second. Some Zerglings pocketing out towards the right. We already have some Photon Cannons down there. It is possible that could be a breach, particularly if we got some Defiler support, but I don't see that happening. Transport, uh, transport upgrading for Jess. The Dragoon's actually taking a massive amount of damage. The Zerglings 
streaming in, and again with that plus two armor, getting a good amount of cannons, that probe just had to die for the cause. That was required. A bunch of lurkers moving out now for Jess. Maybe at a stream bottom right to make sure that base is going to get taken care of. That probe still on the inside. Dragoons marching back up to the 12 o'clock. Maybe for Bug to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock base. Bug now 30 supply up. The Corsair having a field day on that Overlord. And I'm wondering if that's going to cause a Dark Templar response. Never mind, a single Hydralisk might maybe... No, is going to let that Corsair escape. And we have a secondary attempt to breach bottom right. Lurkers walking into Sidestorm as they're moving, unfortunately, but that is so many Lurkers. They're going to be able to obliterate this front very, very rapidly. I think there's going to be a dead natural. And a tough follow-up defense, honestly. It looks like we have some units trying to stream mid-map to maybe deal with this, but this is going to be a dead natural. We do have the three, three cans and an Archon in between here. But Bug taking some losses. Another Pylon being dropped. I'm wondering if that's going to be a, an attempted cannon play. Top left, but Jess, despite being down 60 supply, finding pockets to get some value with what's out on the field. Bug now positioning outside the natural. Some Zergling stream up to the 12 o'clock. They are going to be able to create some disruption there. So Jess making a game of it, honestly, despite what, the, what it looks like on paper. More lurkers spawning. Again, under Psy Storm. But I think this is too much. Bug starting to press in. Plus three open, plus two armor now. And I don't know that... I don't think these three sunken colonies are going to be sufficient to deal with everything that's left. The Zerglings trying to uh, engage from the retreat. We also, despite Hive Tech, do not have Defiler support. Looks like some Dragoons are going to die in between. The Zealots, however, need to make their way back out to the right to deal with these Zerglings. And it looks like, unfortunately, for Bugs, some of this army... Never mind, the Zerglings get cleaned up. Some of the army's attacking the buildings, and what, they're not dealing with the reinforcements. So the Lurker's moving in. The Observer slightly out of position. Bug now regrouping, dropping some... Actually, some nice Psy Storm in between, but it looks like this army is going to get cleaned up. We have another army made its way to the 12 o'clock location. I'm wondering if they're going to go for a breach here. Top left. Psy Storm... Last second, clearing out the drone line at the natural expansion. Bugs main still has some minerals left. The natural expansion is just about mined out, but that 3 o'clock base humming, bottom right's humming, 12 o'clock base is also working. Just down 50 supply, but that is 50 supply of workers. And now we're starting to see the gateways get built top left. Just once again going into a little bit more of a defensive slot. Bug making their way uh, down the ramp in the bottom right-hand corner, grabbing that. So, 6 o'clock burrow being upgraded. Actually, just caught that. I don't think I would have noticed otherwise. 6 o'clock base being saturated from Jess. Jess does have... Honestly, I was expecting this to be a lot worse at this stage, but uh, Jess putting up a pretty good fight here. Supply cap right this second. Not helping. This needs to get spotted and taken care of. Could be troublesome. We do have some lurkers and whatnot potentially in place to cope with that. This does solve the problem for Bug of how do you get up the ramp, though. Dark Templar are being produced. The Observer going to make the way back across. Some Zerglings streaming in here to the 6 o'clock. They're moving out of position. That is a lot of Archons. But fortunately for Jess, the Archons... Not... Well, maybe not fortunate, actually. The Archons with the splash damage attacking units on top still able to get a kill. It looks like Jess did find... All that was being built top left, so that's going to be some forfeit resources from Bug. Bug losing, it looks like, a lot of probes to a Lurker Drop 12 o'clock location. So damage being done both directions. It looks like there was a cancellation of troops. And the Observer is not pinning on the, the Archons, allowing those Lurkers to get a lot of damage done. But this looks like it's enough of a Fireball squad. That is the, the proper name for this unit grouping. You know how I have, you know, I have like the Airborne or whatever, and they name them like the... The Turkey Hunters or whatever. This is the Fire Squad. It's part of that Protoss grouping. Observers. Yeah, this is very breachable, and then there's a lot of tech and whatnot that could easily get destroyed. Top right. Instead, Bug repositioning and engaging. Instead of getting up the ramp, engaging reinforcements, the Dark Templar did sneak out top left. And it looks like emptied everything up there. 
So chaos both directions. And it looks like the Archons, rather than it getting into the main, are going to get cleaned up by the Lurker lines with a follow-up. And these Lurkers absolutely devastating the 12 o'clock. It looks like they might get an Exus kill. We have some Zealots making the way in. Zealots are usually not what you want to have engage Lurkers. It looks like they are going to be able to clean this up, but they're taking some decent damage for their efforts. The Dark Templar finally getting cleaned up top left. The return of Dave. David. Are all Dark Templars Daves? In their hearts they are. So as things settle, we basically have a split map. Supply lead for Bug, but not an army comp. Uh, natural expansion down for Jess. 12 o'clock base looks like it's getting resaturated. And bottom right looks like it's going to get regrabbed from Bug. So usually Zerg has to be A base up to... Uh, win these situations. So in this scenario, with just not grabbing the top left, maybe not being in a position to do so, this does look like it, again, on paper, is a bug win. Bug marching back up top left. Looks like Jess was thinking about grabbing that base, but might have to worry about the rest of that army sweeping in. It looks like that is going to create some problems for reinforcements. Observer is getting picked off, though. One remains. But the observer just in range, so it looks like the APL uh, is it whatever the sensors have been upgraded to get that additional range. So now everything top left is going to be gone from Jess as well. So Jess is going to be down to the nine o'clock base and the six o'clock base, which might be enough to to uh, encourage a GG. We'll see. Near max upgrades on both sides of the map, by the way. Still a, a big supply lead for Bug. Bug actually might be able to clean this attack force up. Yeah, as long as he sweeps around and gets the concentration. It looks like the drone desperately wants to get that hatchery back up. And I recan, it looks like the Zerglings with the Adrenal upgrade is going to be able to chew through that army without too much trouble. All right, so where, where are we standing? 110 supply. 6 o'clock base, main still mining for Jess. 9 o'clock looking somewhat thin. We got Reavers... Three Reavers at the 12 o'clock, so that's going to be a tough breach. We have a Dark Archon and some cannons, and soon to be Reavers bottom right. More Archons morphing at the natural. Bug again sitting near the 200 supply mark. Just grabbing that hatchery top left, but still needs to find needs to take out a base and grab a base. Especially with the trades and the way they've gone up to this stage to stay alive and in the match. We also have, it looks like, some Reavers and Shuttles wanting to sweep around and do some devastation. A lot of targets to do, so it looks like Zerglings mid-map are spotting that. It looks like they're going to be a bit summarily melted. They just die so rapidly to those Archons in the late game. Where'd the Shuttle go? Shuttles mid-map. The Zerglings still able to keep an eye on it. The Observer's spreading out towards the main. And I'll be interested to see how this attack spreads for Bug. Looks like the Archons... Are the, the Lurkers going to go to the high ground here? Or so, not the Lurkers, the Reavers going to go to the high ground here. It looks like initially they're challenging it. The Overlords scooping up Zerglings. And spotting the Zerglings just getting annihilated here. Oh, going after that shuttle. Nice defense from the Archons to clear the units out. We have all sorts of Midnight Blue now in that bottom left. Breaching their way into the ramp to go after the juicy hatchery lines, that hive, and a lot of the rest of the tech. Zerglings trying to stream across, but if you have two Archons at hold position on this ramp, it's not infinite Zerglings, but it certainly feels like it here at the end game. So hatcheries, yeah, all they have to do is hold here. And especially with the splash down the ramp, it's brutal. Archon finally gets taken care of, but that was a control group and a half of Zerglings. Just going to call GG right there. Well played from Bug. We'll advance to the next round. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.